<clears throat> we're going to have a special dedication to Lili Nishmat Luma Chana Bat Chaiki, who is the mother of one of our precious listeners. And um, it's her yard site in the month of, of Tammuz. <clears throat> Um, a special woman, a sweet woman, who is very, very proud now of her children, especially her daughter. Um, <clears throat> her daughter Melissa, Miriam, Sarah, Miriam, and all of her family. So we have that. <clears throat> we have that. Um, we have that in mind. And uh, let's see if I can still do this. I don't like to give up, <laughs> but. You never know what Hashem wants. Right? Okay, I'm going to let this go. We're just going to learn. I'm very distracted now because we're being bombarded here in the north. I don't know if you've gotten the message. We've had for the last couple of hours um, bombardment in the north. Uh, here, I was told I shouldn't say where I live, believe it or not. It's such a crazy world, right? It's a crazy world that I shouldn't say on YouTube where I live. So all the yeah, yesterday there was actually a, a scare about something in the area where you live. Correct. So um, uh, everybody knows where I live who's supposed to know, and if you don't know, that's also okay. But it's quiet here, but there, but people are gathering, you know. Um, it's quiet. The kids are on vacation now. The whole north is empty of people, except in some of the kibbutzim in the north. There are still people there, and they're recording. We have friends in Tiberia. We have friends in Naharia. Let me see if Gold is on. Is Gold on? Gold, Gold, one of our members, is not on right now, but she's uh, she's in Tiberia right now, in Naharia. And um, I was told, I have to really ask her, Two big tzaddikim from the north have relocated to Yerushalayim. One, uh, and the truth is I'm not going to say, say where either. And I have to tell you something very interesting. I don't know if I told you this, um, but I will tell you right now that last week on Wednesday, um, I gave a shear on, and we put it on the on this channel, I gave a shear on Parsha Shlach because of this, because and that was the parsha, the Wednesday parsha class, and um, and we got and and the the um, channel, our channel, our YouTube channel, got um, spammed or I don't know what you'd call it by a whole bunch of uh, Palestinians who uh, wrote very negative comments because the name of the class was "Loving the Land of Israel," and you know that anytime you put Israel onto anything in YouTube, you're going to have either spammers or pe you have either people or you have robots who are going to make negative comments. That's how bad our PR is. So um, but that's why I'm being more cautious this week. Uh, I was able to delete all those comments and I haven't gotten uh, I haven't looked at the rest of the, you know, I haven't looked at it since. But um, Hashem is making it. Hashem is making so many things happen, and we're just waiting to see what will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the expression in American English. You know that in America, they already had the straw that breaks the camel's back. They had that crazy uh, debate, and the whole America, you couldn't, you couldn't hide anymore the fact that the Current person who's supposed who has the, the title of the president of America is not with it. He's not all there. I think the whole thing is one big setup. I'm just going to tell you my personal opinion. You didn't ask me for it, but I'll tell you anyway since I have the mic. I I think it's a one big setup. They're they're allowing him to show his um, in, incompetence. Um, anyone who Anyone who's ever been watching any of those interviews or any of the press conferences or anything for the last few years um, knows that a live debate is a suicide 
for that person. And that's exactly, I mean, political suicide. And that's exactly what happened. He was completely inept and the whole world saw it. But I think that this is all one big show. And whatever they, whatever we see and we, and we think we say, we think we say like, oh, wow, look at that. It's just what they want us to see, what they want us to think. Yeah, it's all one big programming job right, right now. And they're trying to, they're going to take him off of the ballot. They're going to try to put Michelle Obama in Mahshama onto the ballot. And her husband will be running the show. And whoever runs him, like they've been doing for the past many, many years, uh, that will continue. Um, so we're going to see how Hashem wakes up the world. But I, one thing I want to tell you in terms of something hopeful, this is an important, this thought is so clear. You know, that I was reading, I didn't watch the debate. I, I don't like to watch, the, and I don't like to hear the voices of those people. Um, I don't have a problem really with Mr. Trump, but um, the other one, sorry for all you anti-Trumpers people there. Um, I have no problem listening to his voice, and I'm very sensitive to these things. And even though he has a very, un, he doesn't have a melodious voice or a pleasant voice, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't smell of tumma. His his voice and his, uh, you know, um, it's funny because you know the, the whole Trump family is very controversial. When I was uh, t a few years ago, I had a I had a Kushner and one of, as one of my students, a cousin of um, of Jared Kushner who was a her came she came to class last name Kushner. I said, "Are you related?" She said, "Yeah, I'm a cousin." I said, "Okay, come talk to me." And she's a cousin. Her uh, her father and Mr. Kushner Sr. Um, are brothers. Uh, I think she calls him Uncle Charlie, something like that. Um, anyway, um, I told her this was oh, this was before the election. Actually, that's how many years ago it was. It was before the last election. I said, "Tell your tell your cousin not to get involved in politics. Tell him to stay away from the White House." You know, tell Jared and his wife to stay away from the White House, to stay away from that whole world. It's horrible. And she said to me, you don't know how tough these people are. They'll be OK. And that was, you know, the four years that Trump, President Trump was president. And uh, so I just heard a clip from her yesterday from from uh, Ivanka Trump, Ivanka Kushner. And uh, Ivanka Trump, a, a.k.a. Yael Kushner, um, she, they asked her, the interviewer asked her, like, how is it possible that you never got involved in the schmutz, in the, in the mud of, of politics? You never answered back. You never got, you know, you, you just, um, you just never um, embroiled yourself in any arguments. And among, many, among the, the things that she said, the last thing that she said was, she said that she's a, there's a concept in Judaism called Lashon Hara. And Lashon Hara means Lashon Hara means evil speech, and it hurts the speaker as well as the listener. And she said her soul is not strong enough to bear the negativity of Lashon Hara, so she opts out. She's very strong not to say any Lashon Hara. And I felt that was such an interesting thing. And the way that she said Lashon Hara, she actually said it even she said it correctly. You know, sometimes people who she said it with the right she said. The, she pronounced the words correctly. Anyway, they should all be well, and we should be well. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. There have not been any warnings in Jerusalem, where I'm living here, uh, in Jerusalem, that I, that part I can say. But if there is, as as we had to do it a long time ago, I'm going to have to put the shear on hold. You just, if there's a siren or anything like that, you just stay put and say some tehillim, and I'll just run out into the hall and come back when I can. Okay, right now let's just let's just learn. We really have to learn because um, we have to learn. So we're in Pasuchet, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm assuming yes because nobody yelled no. Agila And I remember that we're we're talking about the whole the whole uh, parak lamana thirty one is talking about trusting God, trusting the Creator of the world, trusting Hashem, and how David Hamel trusted 
Hashem, even though he was in such difficult circumstances, and he was running away from enemies, and he was he was in a you know in a state of the enemy didn't recognize who he was, didn't recognize his righteousness. I always feel that you know the the um, you know the average probably the average uh, human. The average, let's talk about Americans, because I grew up in America, and I can't say this for the average Brit Londoner because I don't know anything about that. I I, I don't have a great, I don't have a lot of information about the non-Jewish people in London, but the average American. And then can I would, just also add that today are elections here as well. And uh, oh, it seems that it, they are saying that it is going to be a total landslide of uh, <clears throat> Labour, um, which means that we will be joining you much sooner. But um, anyway, what just does it mean? is Labour bad or good? Labour is not good for us. Not, not good, good for, for, no. for Israel. Well, I don't know. Marcel saying maybe yes, maybe no. We don't know. We'll uh -huh. wait for Kodesh Baruch to decide to to help us. But just everybody should vote. Uh, who should they vote for? No, watching Marcel. I don't know. <laughs> Whichever one's going to bring Mashiach sooner, we vote. And we just hope that the Siata de Shmaya is that the cross and the signature went on the right place. Listen, probably none of the elections are, are, uh, are um, unfixed. They're probably all fixed. It doesn't matter. Hashem runs the world. You know, we have to come to the point of, of just letting go and saying, Hashem, I'm going to do my best in my life. And I'm going to pray the best that I can. But you're the one who's in charge of elections and of bombs and of big things. I'm I'm not. But we should you should know something. The Yanuka said that Mashiach can come by a very simple by a very simple person doing a very simple, kind action. We don't have to be the greatest of the great, because Hashem is in charge. It's only Hashem's vote. This is a very good quote that Rabbi Kessin says. Only one vote matters, and that's Hashem's. Whatever Hashem decides. I want to be happy and rejoice in your kindness and your love. You see my, my misery. And you know this, the difficulty of my, that my soul is going through. Only Hashem knows, first of all, there's on a level of nationhood. The whole world is crazy against the Jewish people. As I was beginning to say before, I really believe that the average person in America isn't evil. I do believe that the average politician in America is evil. I believe that the, the average, and again, that's a very big statement. And of course, I'm sure there are very good, there are people who have good intentions, but the, the majority of politicians are evil. The majority of the media is evil. And they all have this mindset. There's a huge amount of competition, a huge amount of a desire for power. And truth is the bottom, bottom of that whole that list of things that are important to these people. So I always felt, I, I told you this once before, I always felt that we could make very big peace in the world if you just had the whole world walking through the streets of Israel Friday night in a spring in a spring when it's spring out. That means before you need to air condition the house and the windows are closed, and before you need to close the windows from because it's cold out. When the weather is perfect and on a Friday night, and you're strolling through the streets of every town in, in Israel. And you're hearing people sing songs, and people, and people, uh, yeah, unfortunately for whoever you just said, Daphna Bat Michal, I think it said. You you hear families singing songs of praises to God, and you hear the clinking of silverware and china and and forks and knives, and you hear the the the, the conversations of families and 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 guests. And this is what Friday night Shabbos is like in. In, in areas, in religious areas, and, and in Shabbos observing areas. And there's no TV, and there's no media, and there's no screens, and there's no noise. It's just family and singing and learning Torah and 
praising God, if the whole world would just see that, if the whole world would see what we see every Friday night, just walking in the streets of Israel, it would be the biggest Kirov. But Hashem doesn't let that happen yet. When it, when it will, it will happen in a second. I want to tell you something else that I, I was in the middle of, I interrupted myself. So the, the debate of Biden and Trump, after five minutes of that debate, the whole world saw that Biden is, in, is incompetent. And all of those Democrats were trying to cover up for him and hide and trying to be like, you know, the Rara, Sis Boomba on the, on, the band, on the cheerleading team, etc. All of them began to either shut up or they began to comment. This is terrible. This is horrible. Get him off the screen, whatever. It just took a few minutes for the whole world to see something that we all knew. So, too, I really hope that it will just take a few minutes for the whole Israel, all the Israelis, to see the incompetence of this current government, to see the, the betrayal of this current government and the Supreme Court and all of the, the Erev Rav here. It'll just take them a few minutes. I don't know when that's going to happen, but if it could change the whole world's opinion of a president in a few minutes, it could change the whole Israel. We just need Israel to do tshuva. We just need Israel to say, this is terrible. Now, we think it's, we keep thinking it's going to happen because every day they're revealing more and more about how in October 7th, the government did know, the army did know, the head of the army told them to be quiet. All of this stuff has been revealed already, but the media is keeping it quiet. We need a, like the, the live debate that, that, that Biden had with Trump. It, it has to be live. It has to be un, um, unden, undeniable. And then the whole Israeli world will do tshuva in a second. And that's ripe for Mashiach to just step in and, and say, okay, yeah, we need honesty. We need Torah. We need more morality. And by the way, no one's going to force anyone to become uh, misobservant. There's no forcing here. First of all, people will want that on their own. But there's no forcing. There's not going to be a Tzinius patrol. There's not going to be a religious you know, the people walking the streets, you know, putting you under arrest if you don't have your knees covered and your elbows covered or whatever. It's not going to be like that at all. Just it will be that the government will indeed be Shomer Shabbos. In other words, the, the official, the things that are run by the state of Israel will have to keep the laws of Shabbos. You can't have a, a politician giving an unnecessary um, interview. It's, uh, what's, what's necessary for the state, of, for, the, for the queue? Is necessary, that's permitted on Shabbos, but what's not necessary, you're not going to have any of these people publicly eating unkosher as a representative of the Jewish people. They're going to anyway all be fired and put into, there's not enough room in jail for them. So Hashem, go back to Pasuchet. I want it to be Hashem, that I will be rejoicing and happy when you show me your chesed. What is chesed? Chesed means kindness. It also means love. When you finally reveal your love to the Jewish people, we know Hashem loves us. Hashem loves us. Hashem loves us. We know that. But we want it to be revealed in a revealed way to the whole world. And we want because, because why? Because Hashem, you see Hashem, my suffering. The word onyi is from the word ani, which means poverty, but it means suffering. In the north, I don't know, I think there's 100,000 Israelis who are displaced. Or in hotels, it's not comfortable. Even if you're in a hotel, it's not. They're not giving you hotel food, and you're cramped with your kids. And the kids are now on vacation. They're trying to give them activities to do, but the activities are meaningless. They're not with their friends. It's very, very hard for all these families. And Nebuch, there's funerals every single day. Today's funeral. Ah, it's so sad. The boy was wounded. And a religious boy was wounded, and he finally got better, and he went back into the army and. They killed him. Oh, Hashem. Velo he's got tiny beyond Oye. So please, Hashem, don't deliver me into the hands of my enemies. We have to say that over and over again. Don't let the enemies win. And we know that it's predicted that there's going to be this very big challenge at the end of time. We know this. The Gemara talks about it. The Gemara says that the Golan and the Galil will be destroyed, and we're living through it right now. It's the last thing in that whole list in the Talmud of um, events and situations that 
that will happen before Mashiach comes. It's the last in that list that's actually being fulfilled right now. Ad Kadekach to the point where the American somebody called Blinken, I don't know what he is, he's some kind of a high official, he announced that, um, I don't know if he said this about Netanyahu or about Israel, or Netanyahu or Israel has lost control over the sovereignty in the north of Israel. We've lost control. So whether that's true or not, and we know that everybody in the American government hates uh, Netanyahu. I don't exactly know why. That's probably the that's probably the biggest uh, compliment that he has, you know, that he can receive is that they all hate him in America, just like they hate Trump. Um, and again, I'm not I'm not a uh, politician, political observer, or even knowing what's going on. I I really subscribe to what the uh, president of America Truman once said. I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, he said. Americans wake up in the morning, they read the newspaper, and they think they know what's going on. And they have no idea what's going on. All they've done is re read the newspaper, and they've read what the newspaper people want them to think is going on. But they have no idea, really, what's going on. So that's what I think is going on, is that we have no idea. And I'm Hello? sorry to interrupt again, but Leona Benenson, who um, works at Neve. Um, so her mother was Nifta yesterday morning and she just sent me her name. So if we could please add and and her and as she said to me, her grandparents had a good sense of humor, but her name was Peril Meryl Bat Shlomo. Should have an Aliana Shamas. They haven't had the Levi yet, but the Ezra Hashem, it's here in England. Hi. Peril Meryl Bat Shlomo. That's interesting. Hi. Mm. I saw this, uh, you see, Ed, Ed, if I keep bl blanking out, it's because every, I have the red alert on my phone and every time there's something in the north that goes on my phone and mutes me for a few seconds. Um, the One of the most painful things in terms of the, um, even though this is Hashem's land, one of the most painful things for me is that um, all the bombs and all the things that they're sending, they're sending these suicide drones and missiles, they're causing fires in the north. Now, today's a very hot day in Israel. It's very hot and it's dry. It's not so much of a windy today, which is Baruch Hashem much better. We had a lot of wind the last couple of days, but this is fire weather when there's fires outside, dry and hot. And there's fires in the north. And if any of you have been to the Golan, you've been to... Uh, Sat, you've been to Severia, you've been to the uh, to the Kinneret. You know how beautiful, beautiful the green mountains are, and it's very hard. It's hard when they burn down these trees. So we ask Hashem, Pasuk Ted, Perak Laman Aleph Pasuk Ted, Chapter Thirty One in, in Tehillim, verse Nine. The Lohi Now David Melk is saying about half, about him that he Hashem did not didn't deliver him into the hands of an enemy, meaning Shaul. But we're using this as a prayer. Please, Hashem, let us be able to say this. I know we will be able to say this, because Hashem in the end will win us. We will win. Uh, the government is not helping them. I don't know who just wrote that. The government just passed a law today, where they, they passed a resolution to extend uh, the hotel stays of people, but I think they have to be within the nine kilometers of the some kind some kind of a rule. Yeah, so I don't think that applies to the north. The south people got the funding. My cousins in the north didn't get a penny of funding. They had to fund themselves. In the end, there's nowhere for them to go. They just have what to go back home. There's no mamad. There's nothing on their kibbutz. It's on the border. They're there yeah. now. The government is not giving them hotels. Nothing. Hotels? Nothing. 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 None of them. People have wow. just left with no supermarkets open. They have to drive an hour to get to the nearest supermarket. And then sometimes it's closed as well. No one's coming to visit their businesses. It's terrible. It's really, really bad. One of the they live in a kibbutz called, um, my auntie set it up, you know, after the before the war even. She went with Khalid Sim. She was one of the first pioneers. Um, it's called Naot Mordechai. It's right at the tip of the Etzbaha Galil, they call it, right at the north. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful place. 
they've got a shawl there and everything it never used to be from it used to be very circular but now uh, there's quite a lot of from people there and there's a shawl and there are she or him it's a beautiful place and uh mm-hmm. it's so sad it's just everything around them is, is full of smoke and fire and burning and ash wow this government you know that they released the prisoners arabs they said there was no room in the prisons of course there's room in the prisons it's a crazy government, ladies. This is, we have to, the, the common man Israeli has to rebel against this whole story and say, Adkan, that's enough. I don't know exactly how that happens, but it will happen. It will happen. If, uh, Rev, um, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to actually say his name because he's a little bit controversial, but one of the, one of the very, very ver- verbal and expressive Rabbanim who's on Yeshurim, Kir of Shurim. He said this week a very he said this a very strong statement. He said, That's it, the government, the Medina is is collapsing. The government is collapsing, the state is collapsing. And he said that's a good thing because the Mashiach could come in. We, we, we all knew that that was going to happen, but we don't know how it's going to be in the interim, that interim state. But again, the Yanuka says not to be afraid. Don't give any energy to negativity. Just love. And, and he says we're in a dangerous time right now. So you know that in Shul, he still says, even on Shabbos, he's still saying Avinu Malkeinu. At Ashkenazim, we don't even say Avinu Malkeinu on Rosh Hashanah if it comes on Rosh Hashanah. And on Yom Kippur if it comes out on Shabbos. But uh, by the Sfarim they do, they have a different, they have a little bit of a shorter, I mean, a, a, a fewer um, of the Bakashon in Avinu Makenu, and he's still saying it. He said it last Shabbos, and he said, we're in a sakana, we're in a, we're in a uh, dangerous time right now, but we're going to be okay. We just have to get through this. So David Amelch is saying this about himself, that this is what happened to him, that God did not give him into the hand of his enemy, and he, and he did stand him up um, and in, in public, um, the Merchav is a public place. It's a large, a, a large like a um, like a place where people would come and speak, and uh, like a stage. And you stood me up, Hashem, in the public, and I you stood me up on my feet in public, Hashem, and you showed everyone that you saved me. That's what happened to King David, and that's what's going to happen to us. We're going to be able to say this. But he's saying it for us because he didn't have to just say about himself. David HaMelech, as you know, King David did not write to Hillel just because he wanted to say a private prayer to God. The Talmud tells us that King David said to God, if I'm the king, which he was, then whatever is happening to me privately is actually happening to the whole Jewish people and will happen at some point to the whole Jewish people. And so my salvation is the salvation of the whole Jewish people and also individually to every individual Jew. And therefore, he wrote to Hillam to give us the words to say when we're in a difficult situation and to give us the words to say when we're in a set, when we have been saved, to give us the words to say when we want to ask Hashem for help, to give us the words to say when we're saying thank you. He gave us the words that he himself received in prophetically. So we're saying, Hashem, you didn't, you didn't let me fall. You didn't let me give, you didn't give me into the hands of my enemies, and you were able to let me stand tall in the UN. The Merchav is the UN or a public space where the whole world will see. But so too should it be for the Jewish people. You know that um, this the, this parak is so important for us because. Um, as I told you, the, the Yenuka said to say this parak and to say to say parak chapter 31 and chapter 71 for women who want to get married, for any of you who want to get married, this is important to say. He said, say it every single day. But also this parak is um, when he was saved from, from Shaul and Shaul finally acknowledged and realized, you're not my enemy at all. So too the world had to look at the Jewish people and say, you're not the enemy at all, just the opposite. You're the saviors of the world. You're the ones who the Jewish people and our morality and our commitment to morality and our stubbornness 
for goodness and for righteousness. That's what's keeping the world going. And um, okay. Now, David Amelch is doing something in this parak of Tehillim that's teaching us how to speak to God. And that is, be real. So on one hand, God says, I want, David Amelch says, all the things that he said is prayer. Help me, save me. Let me be rejoicing. You already saved me. And now he goes back to saying, but you have to help me again. So a person goes through those kinds of back and forth in life, meaning even in one situation, um, you could be strong and five minutes later need strength. And then five minutes later, you're strength and you're strong again. And a few minutes later, you're feeling that you need another hug from Hashem because it's too hard for you. Here, Haneni Hashem Kitsarli, please Hashem, be kind to me, be compassionate to me. Because it's hard for me. Tsar from the word Tsara. Tsara means like in Yiddish we say Tsuras, right? Tsuras means suffering and difficulty. Tsar literally means narrow, and it's the root of the name of the country called Mitzrayim. Narrowness means when you're being squeezed, when the life force is being squeezed out of you, when life is too hard and you feel you suffocating. Chaneni Hashem, please Hashem. Be compassionate, be merciful, be kind to me. Kitsarli is too hard for me. It's too, it's just too much pressure on me. Listen to what he says. And those of you who can feel this physically. So Ashasha, um, it means to be weakened, to weak. So my my soul, um because now because here doesn't mean anger it means suffering it means difficulty it means it means, it means grief it means sadness it doesn't mean like I'm angry at you so my uh what what has weakened any my eyes not she my emotions beat me my stomach my whole uh, the my physical spiritual and emotional side of me has been weakened because of the suffering that I'm going through and we know that David Amel physically, he went through times in his life where he was physically ill because he himself, again, was a king. The king is a representation of the whole Jewish people when the Jewish people are suffering, so his physicality is suffering. That's why we see, if you see, let's say, Tzadikim like Rav Dov Kuk. Dov Kuk fasts all the time. You ever see him? He's skin and bones. His skin doesn't even cut. It's like his face is pulled and he doesn't eat. His wife said, the Rabbi Leia said, he doesn't eat. He fa- yeah, she says it smiling and laughing because and, that's her nature. Um, you know, he drinks, but very rarely he'll eat when he's like fainting away because he's a, the tzaddikim take the physical body, they take the, the pain of the Jewish people and they take it into themselves. They try to, you know, Yosef at Sadiq did that, Zavon HaMelech did that, and we don't want our tzaddikim. Every single day I pray to Hashem that the tzaddikim shouldn't be, their bodies shouldn't be pained. They shouldn't have pain. In, the, in part of the davening in Shacharis is a place where you can daven for health. And I daven that the tzaddikim, they shouldn't have pain. They shouldn't have weakness. They shouldn't have physical distress, even though they themselves take it upon themselves. But we're allowed to pray that they don't, that they don't suffer from it. See, David Melch is saying, I'm wasting away from the aggravation. What's wasting in my eyes, how I see things, my emotions, my nefesh here means my emotions. My, it means the, 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 the animating force within the human being is called the nefesh, and it has the belly, the soul, but it means here the emotions. Everything's falling apart. My stomach, I can't eat, can't digest, I can't tolerate. When a person has a stomachache in Chinese medicine, they say that when a person has a stomachache, uh, it means that there's something that they can't stomach in life. I don't know if you have that in British English, but there's something they can't tolerate. There's something that they can't digest. There's something going on that's just too hard for them. So stomach aches are, you know, when little kids have stomach aches because they're nervous for school, because they can't tolerate school. I don't blame them. I remember when I used to have 
school stomach aches. But it means that they, the stomach, which is a digestive, the whole digestive tract is wasting away. A person's not eating, a person's fasting. A person's eyes are crying like Leia Imenu. Her eyes were so weak because she kept crying and crying and crying. And a person's emotions are drained. You all know that. We've all had life. That's what life is like. But here David Amelch is saying these words now because he's praying for the Jewish people. Now, you should know that in the for, just because I mentioned before that this chapter, Lamed al Fan chapter 71, which we did already, which is also very parallel to this, is for a woman who is searching for her soulmate. So everyone here knows that a person who's in that, mat, in that situation feels half alive. The other half is not alive. Their, their eyes are crying and their stomach is, it's hard to eat or people sometimes eat too much. Their emotions are raw. And, and so Zavad Melch is giving us words here to be able to use to get that across. When it says Chaneni Hashem, the word Chaneni, also the root is the word Chain. Chain means to be beautiful. To be beautiful, but not in a, in a glamorous way, but to be beautiful in a, in, a, in a really holy, beautiful way, in a pure way. That's called Chain. So Chaneni, which means also to have compassion, it means Hashem, let me remember how beautiful I am in your eyes. Remember how beautiful I am in your eyes. Because I'm a Jew because I'm your daughter, because you created me, because I'm trying my best. A Jewish woman who keeps the laws of modesty in the summer has the biggest merit possible because it's hot. And where you live, it's not a style to go dress modestly, perhaps. And so a Jewish woman who goes modestly in the summer has, I mean, all year long, but especially in the summer, has so, so much merit, and that's why it's one of the hardest mitzvot for a Jewish woman to keep, because we're so sensitive to the way we look. We're so sensitive to appearances, and we're also so sensitive to how we feel. It's hot. You want to be comfortable. And we're so sensitive to having a certain kind of, um, you know, popularity. And if you look too religious, then you're in a different sphere. But if you're able to do it in the summer, you can't imagine the merit that you have. You can't imagine the merit that you have. The zechus, the spiritual power that you have. And by the way, once a person starts to dress like that in the summer, um, they begin to change drastically and dramatically. So if anybody needs help with that, go speak to Rabbi Dove and she'll give you some coaching on all the laws and all the tricks of how to do that. But that's real chen. So if you want if you want chanun, if you want God to have compassion, then you have to find favor in his eyes. And you know Hashem loves you when you're representing him correctly. And Hashem told us how to represent him correctly, how to look a certain way, how to behave a certain way. You should know that I told you the word sar here is the root of the word Mitzrayim. Sar, which means suffering and which means an enemy. A tsorer, Haman is called a tsorer ha'yehudim, the one who trapped. So they just revealed today something really remarkable. You know that with Egypt, we have a peace, a peace treaty. We gave them the whole Sinai desert and, we, and they, they, gave, they gave us back a piece of paper. You know that they always say about Jews that we're good business people, not the Israeli politicians, not good business people at all. They gave us a piece of paper saying, okay, we'll make peace with you. And the truth is they have not, since uh, that treaty was signed, when was that? I forgot. Uh, they haven't um, sent direct attacks on the Jewish people. But did you know, they just revealed now that in, that in Egypt, uh, there are tunnels that they allowed Hamas to dig under, you know, from from Gaza to Egypt. We have no idea 
uh, if if the you know how many Hamas leaders were smuggled out in those tunnels, we have no idea how many of the hostages were taken out via those tunnels, and who knows where they are in the world. We know that many Hamas leaders have appeared in Iran of all places. Hamas leaders who were in Gaza, and all of a sudden there was a today reveal. Families of them, they came with their families to Iran and they were welcome, the heroes welcome. Somebody uh, smuggled out some kind of a video of this. So Mitzrayim, which we have supposedly a, tre- a peace treaty with, so they didn't attack us directly. They allowed Hamas to dig tunnels underneath them. And that's where all of the, that's where all of the, uh, their weapons come from. You know, you wonder, yesterday there was a shooting from uh, Gaza into uh, the south. And, you know, the Israeli government has, the army has been there for nine months, and we're a pretty good army. How come they're still shooting us from the south? Gaza is not that big, but they could, you know, they've been destroying us. So what's, where is there still weapons? Because they're getting them from Egypt, smuggling them under. That's Tsar. That's Mitzrayim. Please, have mercy on us. This, this pasuk is so expressive. You know, I hate to translate it into English. It's so, it's so hard because this is so much emotion here. My life is just, is just, my life force is, is weakened by all the sighs that I'm sighing, my whole, I'm just crying and sighing and exhausted. My life, my years are sh- being shortened by all of the kvetches and the sighing and the crying and the suffering. Now here, Rabbi Melch is telling us a very interesting thing. Where's my koach? Where's my strength being weakened? Because of my mistakes. Kashal ba'avoni, avon is my, my sins, my mistakes. But to my asheshu, the same word that you had before, ashesha, my, my bones are wasting away. It's very hard to try to juggle, juggle now this concept of, the Gemara says, ein yisurim below chet. That's a, a four words straight from the Talmud. A person doesn't suffer unless there's a reason for it. And even a, and a reason that they did something wrong. On one hand, we have that thought. On the other hand, Zavon Amel says, you can never know what you're suffering from. You're trying your best, but you don't know. You have a person, you have righteous people who are suffering. They don't have sins. The Gemara also says, if you see a righteous person doing something wrong, you should know that they, whenever, if you should know that by the next day, they've already done Teshuvah. So don't suspect them and don't talk about it if they're righteous and all of us are religious women and so if we do something wrong so when we wake up from that from that stupor that we were in because the Gemara says that we don't do anything wrong unless we're lost our minds for a few seconds we do tshuva right away we right away feel bad we right away do tshuva and we apologize etc but sometimes we do the wrong thing and that weakens us. The other day, I was um, I was with one of these one of my Sadeka's friends, and she had a little bit of cyanica. You know, a cyanica. So um, you know, she had like pain her whole day, and and it was hurting her. And she's she's a strong woman, but sciatica can sometimes come from all kinds of things, and. Um, so it was getting, it was on Shabbos, last Shabbos, and it was getting worse as the day was going on. And she kept saying, um, which means, Hashem, you do the right thing. And I did, whatever it is that I, I deserve this. You're a tzaddik, you're right, you're good. I deserve this for some reason. Please help me to do tshuva. Please help me to forgive me and let me be better. And, but you're righteous. She kept saying, giving Hashem excuses. She kept excusing him. The fact that she was in pain, it's not your fault, even though Hashem was the one who did it. 
you're righteous. I must deserve this for some reason. Okay, now, you know, we, you can go crazy from that kind of a mindset because most of us, most of the world now is OCD and they have no self-esteem and they blame themselves for everything. And sometimes when you blame yourself, it's also, it's also uh, what, writing Hashem out of the picture. But Ki Kashal, says, Kashal Babani Kochi, I'm weak, I'm, I'm tired because of my mistakes. Now listen, um, it's also talking about the Jewish people. We're at the end of the, we're at the end of history. We're so much at the end of history that every single day I wonder how much longer is this going to go on? How many more days until, you know, how many more events, how many more sadnesses? We're, re we're really, really at the end. And again, it can, in five minutes, the whole world could wake up. And we keep thinking, oh, now they're going to wake up. Remember in 9-11? I remember in 9-11, my first reaction, and I'm sure it was yours also, my first reaction was, now the world will understand what Israel is going through. And now the world will be against terrorism and pro-goodness. How many years ago was that? And now the world is chanting Intifada, I don't know, worldwide Intifada, some crazy thing like that. Which, of course, these people have no idea what they're chanting. They're all robots and they're all sadly silly people who've taken a lot of money to, uh, to go to these demonstrations and scream what they scream. I always felt that whenever anybody screams at a demonstration, it's so beneath the dignity of a human being. It's so, it's not human. It's not dignified to scream. Remember that last demonstration I was at? I was at two demonstrations, three demonstrations here in the land of Israel in the last 23 years. <laughs> two of them were by, about Bush Katif, and one of them was about uh, the, the just the whole anti-Haredi mindset. The two good, and all of them were, were demonstrations organized by the, you know, by independent religious, it wasn't like the Rabbanut or anything like that. The Rabbanut's not independent, it's a government agency. But independent Rabbanim, or Rosh Hashivas and Rabbanim and Sadiqim. And all of these three demonstrations, all we did was say to him, Nobody screamed, there were no megaphones, there was no speeches. It was just getting together and saying to him. And somebody in the microphone saying to him. So the Jewish people, our strength, we're tired. The Jewish people are tired. It's because our leadership is not good. We need Mashiach now. We needed Mashiach already 50 years ago. But Hashem figured. Not really, because look, we survived 50 years. But now it's scary. And by the way, don't don't think about any of these, you know, this whole thing about dress, drafting Haredi into the army. The army does not want Haredi men, number one. They just want to distract you right now. They do this every few years. They have a whole thing with, um, uh, you know, a whole, a whole thing in the Knesset about Drafting Haredi men. Every few years, whenever there's something that the government wants to be distract wants to distract you from, they bring up the subject again. The government wants to distract you from the fact that um, Arabs are being let out of prison, Jews are not being let out of prison. These are Israeli prisons. Um, demonstrations. Left these demonstrations, they just the police just let them go, and religious demonstrations they spray them with water tanks. I the, the, every single Mosi Shabbos, whenever whenever I'm in I'm in town for Shabbos, so Mosi Shabbos getting home is a little bit of a challenge because there are those demonstrations every Mosi Shabbos, and they just take over town. Oh, sorry. They're not arrested. This has been a good year because there hasn't been one bomb in the last 40 minutes. I titled the year when I sent it out to them. You get you are in different groups. When I sent it out to my groups, I said they're bombing the north. Let's learn some Zillin. Okay, so I'm going to read you it off again. 
My whole life is being weakened by my suffering, by my sadness. All of my years I'm spending sighing and sadness and 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 misfortune. My strength is is being dripped out of me, is draining out of me because of my mistakes. But my my bones are being worn down. Now you should know something. You have four things there. Chayai, right? Shnotai, Kochi, and Atzamai. Four four words of different le- levels of this of, of our life. Every four the, every four we have in 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 Tehillim is always the four letters of Hashem's name, the four mothers, the four forefathers, where Yitzchak, where Yaakov is Yaakov and Yisrael, the four elements. All of the fours here are suffering. And when when the Jewish people suffer, Hashem suffers. He calls the Rai This is the pasuk that I that I um, that I feel all of these sukkim are so relevant to this war. He calls the Rai All of my enemies, in front of all of my enemies, I'm a disgrace. People people hate us. Why? For no reason. Why is Hashem let it happen? Because Hashem wants to remind you, you're not going to, you can't assimilate. Stop assimilating. Stop trying to copy them. The more you copy them, the more they hate you. And it's a subconscious thing because they want, Then the world knows that if the Jewish people finally achieve our tikkun, then the whole, our fixing, then the whole world will have its fixing. And they're annoyed with us. Why are we not getting the job done? So on a certain level, when we are a disgrace to the world, when we're not doing our life's work, when we're not living a religious lifestyle, a holy lifestyle, a loving human being's lifestyle. The Rav said this week that the highest level of showing your holiness is when you love other Jews. And if you can't do that, you have to check yourself a lot. Because loving other Jews is the most important thing right now. He says it again and again and again. It doesn't mean I have to love you emotionally, even though, of course, you should. But it means I have to care about you. Just because I'm not being bombed here where I live doesn't mean I have to not care about your cousins in the north and my cousins in the north who are being going, going through scary stuff. And the fires there are you know, coming closest to the homes. And there's not enough, we don't have enough manpower here. And we're being (coughs) attacked from within. It's so sad. It's just so sad. You know that one of my friends, her son is in the army. He's actually getting married soon. It was a big, it's a big nice. And he's, it's a big nice that he got engaged and he's getting married. He's a very, very remarkable, remarkable, but unusual young man. And he needed a good helmet. Because the army, the reserves do not have, they just don't have, even though the army keeps saying they're giving everybody equipment, sorry, but they're not. Maybe they're giving the soldiers who are in the army, but the reservists, and that's the majority now, are not getting equipment. So all of you, I'm sure, donated equipment, donated, and there's so much. I heard that there's, I think, seven tons of equipment waiting uh, and donations waiting in the airport and the Bureaucracy won't let it through. And everyone's blaming everybody else. Meanwhile, the helmets are not being brought and the, all the things that the soldiers need. So this particular soldier, his mother said, just get me a helmet on your own. And I did. I, we collected money from this year, from another year. It cost $700, the kind of helmet he needed. And uh, we got a helmet and somebody brought it from America so that he didn't have to go through the whole waiting for a shipment and waiting for an approval because of the customs and all. You know, we're fighting on so many different levels. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to start again next week, possibly a bit. Let's hope. I, first of all, ladies, thank you that you join me in, in uh, learning for, for our boys and for our whole country. Um, our boys and our country. When I said our, I would I'm say, I'm saying like all of us feel the same. We, we wish we were there with you. That's right, Hashem. You are, you're all here right now. You're all here. I'm looking at the sky and bringing you here. You're all here. 
your hearts are here and you wish, you know, it's funny because I remember thinking, I'm so glad I'm here. I feel bad for the people who are not here. But Bezrat Hashem, we're going to hear good news. Everyone, ladies, we all have to try harder. What can we say? Everybody is trying. We're all being pushed so much to the max on every level, financially and emotionally and and medically. Every People are going through stuff. And ah, Hashem is being so good to us. Say the parak of Tilim. Say Tilim whenever you can. You know, the Lubavitch Rebbe once said, the first Lubavitch Rebbe once said, if we would only see the power of Tehillim, we would not stop. We couldn't stop if we see what the angels that we're creating, the holiness that we're creating, the the the, the protection that we're creating. And here in Eretz Israel, it's going to be good. In the end, we know it's going to be good. All the soldiers who were killed are going to come back. Their first ones are going to come back. And they'll come back whole and beautiful and strong. And all the ones who have lost limbs, their limbs will come back. I told you that last week, a boy, uh, I don't know, last week, two weeks ago, uh, one of the soldiers who lost a leg, a leg, either leg or legs, I don't know, came to the Inuka for a bracha. And, they, and he was, you know, they brought him in a wheelchair and he, um, they said to him he lost his leg and, you know, in the fighting and the, and the Rav said, he has the holiest leg. He has the best leg, better legs than any of us. That leg that he lost is, is the heart. He has such a leg. Wow, you can't imagine. He told the boy. He told the, the man. And he gave him so much chizuk. He gave him so much strength. He said, your leg is so holy. You're, you're going to be able to walk. You'll dance. You'll be the simcha. Okay, sweetie pies. Let me say hi to everybody. Don't go off. Don't go off. Hi, Rabbi Sindel. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Jenny. And certain people are always at the top of my screen. Hi, Haley. Hi, Ora. Hi, Annie. Oh, Annie, I didn't see you in such a long time. It's so good to see you. Wow. Hi, Shira. Who's near you, Shira? You're doing your challah? She's busy cooking. Hi, Marcel. Hi, iPhone. Who's that, Shari? Come on, wow. What is it, two o'clock in the morning Were you in America? I'm so glad to see you. I forgot, five, six, I forgot your Hebrew name, Sipora. Sipi, yeah? I know her as, wow. Hi, Shira, I said hi to you, but you were too busy. Hi, Nomi. Hi, Dalia. Hi, Liz. Ach, I love Dalia's seeing just, you. Dalia just landed from Australia yesterday, so Rebecca, she's coming. Wow, wow. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Naomi again. Naomi, hi, Sarah. I saw you kept popping in and out. Hi, Ruthie. Hi, Shella. Hi, Aviva. Hi, Shulamit. Hi, Sharon. And hi, last one on my screen. Always the name always gets knocked off. One second. Who didn't I say hi to? Geraldine, I said. Sakara, Kaylee, Kayla, Liz. Okay, Sharon. If you pop on my screen, then I see your faces. Well... Ah, ah, ah. You're such special people. Thank you so much for coming. I really miss you. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Shabbat shalom, shalom and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for Shabbat. Rebbets and Silber, do you know um, Hani Gottlieb from New York? Have you met her? Uh, anyway, hey. she's coming. She's going to be doing a Zoom tonight and she's coming to London to speak. And Sunday morning, we're just waiting for confirmation of um, where, but we keep the time open, 10.30, anybody locally in London, we'll be having a musical halal and share. Yeah, so, lovely. Lovely. beautiful. Beautiful. Just before we pack our bags. What before? You have time before Shabbos. You're only five hours away. You can oh, I'm waiting. On to a pop, on to a plane. And as Rasa Shabbos. Shabbos. Everybody just keep having to get here, to come here, to live here, to love here, and to stay here and to see Mashiach Tzikene with your own eyes. Amen. We have to see Hashem being the Melech. We want Hashem to be the Melech. We don't want anything else. No more Sheker. No more lying. Just Hashem should be the Melech. And we should, we'll be all so happy. Whoa, we'll be so happy when Hashem is, when Hashem is showing us his mouth was, with Mashiach mm -hmm. Wow, that would be something really, really special. Really special. 
Oh, it's so good. So many faces I didn't see. And I'm just looking at my screen, enjoying seeing you guys. I haven't seen you in such a long time, so many of you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Okay, have a good Shabbos, good Shabbos, everybody. And good Chodesh. Good Chodesh. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov to everybody. Chodesh Tov. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Thank you very much. Good Shabbos. I want to see what you were busy with, Candace. I want to see all the things you were busy with. I'm making cards, little nice. Shabbat cards. I'm going to try and nice. sell nice. them, hopefully. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Candace, sorry, I called you Aura. I know that she's Aura. Aura, yeah, Aura's. Oh, that's beautiful. Aura. Really lovely. Right, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah.